Um, this is a, a short explanation on how to write papers with Google Docs. Uh, there's a blog post I wrote about it. Um, it's also on the F1000 uh, website. Um, and the idea is that uh, we want to write, uh, uh, we want to use Google Docs to write papers because people can use them easily without having to learn all the syntax from LaTeX, but also use a lot of the nice features from LaTeX. So like a while back, I started with Googling stuff that can do some of these parts. And here we have all the installation stuff. It's, it's a link from the, rule, um, from the blog post. Okay, so first we were looking at F1000 workspace. It has this thing called shared projects. And at that point we decided to, it was better to record this. Um, okay, so shared projects. Um, so you can, if this is a new paper, you know, you can create one here on the left on the plus, create new, um, give it a name. Once you have a project, then on the right side here, uh, you can, there's a, a manage members, um, like little person icon with a plus where you can invite people. Everyone can then like start adding references um, or editing them. And this F1000 workspace has a lot of nice tools. Um, simply from the website, you can click here on the, on the uh, top left, import references. You can import them from PDFs, which I don't really, really do. The ones that I do most frequently is the one here, identifiers where you import from a DOI, Digital Object Identifier, PMID, which is a PubMed ID, PC, PMC ID, which is PubMed Central ID. Uh, so those are the ones I use the most, and I typically use a single version. You can also now import multiple DOIs and stuff like that. Um, now, the other one that I use quite frequently is import from reference files, uh, in particular, um, uh, well, oops, he wants me to open a file. In particular, the BIP format, which is, um, um, and that one I use for quite frequently because if we open R and we want to cite a package, um, uh, you would use uh, uh, the citation function. If I can make this bigger. Um, so let's say citation ggplot2. And what you get here is a BibTeX entry for LaTeX users. So you can copy paste that into a text file. And here, copy, make a new text file. Um, and you just need to save it with a .bib extension. Um, I want to save it on my desktop. So ggplot2.bib. And so that way you can import it um, and things like that. Um, um, so that's one I use quite frequently because of the relationship to R uh, and for our packages. Um, I want to actually import the reference here. Um, um, now F1000 workspace also has a Google Chrome extension such that if you're in, um, on a, uh, on a website for a paper. So let's see here. Here, I'm going to nature.com for one of my papers. Um, you can, in theory, click this F1000 annotator on my top right of my Google Chrome. And you can add it to a particular, like, oh, I guess I need to reload it. Well, in theory, you can add it to a particular um, project you already made. So all of this is like, you know, it's useful, it works. It's nothing like super, super special really at this point, um, uh, besides the part that you're working with, you know, multiple people um, uh, uh, making the annotations. Um, I mean, sorry, the end, your bibliography. Um, so the part here comes, the fun part now comes when you insert, um, sorry, you, you install the Google Chrome F1000 workspace extension. And so in this particular Google Doc that I made, um, we can say, uh, uh, let's say we're writing a sentence and say, say like, uh, count to test. So 
thousand human RNA seq samples. Let's say I want to cite their recon too. So once you add the once you install the F1000 workspace Google Chrome extension, um, um, sorry, and the Google Doc one too. I don't know if you have put the link to that. Um, but it, it is on the it is on the linked on the blog. Um, so maybe here I'm missing F1000 workspace. Uh, Lock extension. Um, let's take okay. So, how do you actually use this? So, you go to tools on the top of your Google Docs menu. Um, sorry, add ons. <laughs> add ons. And here we see F1000. Um, and so, uh, something you can do is you can link a particular Google Doc to a project. Uh, from uh, from F1000, um, uh, it's not necessary to do it, but if you do it, um, and I do, I do recommend doing this for a paper, not for this particular example. If you do it, then um, then um, all your search results will uh, will first be linked to that particular project. But I don't have any any particular project right now, so uh, I'm not going to link it. Um, I'm just going to do what is called an insert citation. Um, so in this case, it's like it's a link to my F1000 workspace account, and it's looking across all my projects. Um, and so I know that at some point I did a recount too. I'm going to search on my list of um, papers, and I mean I actually have a biarchid version for another paper that mentions recount too. Uh, but I know that the one I wanted to cite is this nature biotechnology one. So you just need to click the blue button site over here on the right. And what it does is that wherever you had your cursor, it inserts the citation. Now, this takes longer as your Google Doc gets bigger and bigger. So please do not click somewhere else on your Google Doc once you already clicked on, on the citation, because then you can mess things up. Now, um, Another thing in particular is that uh, this works best on the Google Doc editing mode, not on the suggest suggestion mode. Um, so a lot of times when I'm doing citations and all of this, I do it on the editing mode. Um, what it actually did, you can see it inserted some blue, some text in blue. But if we click on it, I'm going to here click edit link. So it puts the text, right? You determine what was the text. But now it actually has a link here to F1000 workspace. It has a citation ID in particular um, and some other information. Right? Um, and so this is really the trick behind the F1000 workspace uh, plugin and the um, cross reference one. Um, um, so um, they both work this way, right? They insert a link and the link has some specific notation. Um, now, so far here, like, you know, we can continue and say like, uh, uh, we can add another sentence. Um, We can cite something else here. So I'm going to cite the recon brain preprint, right? And like, let's say you know we've we've done with we're done with our paper, and we actually want to format the citations. So um, at the end of your document or wherever you want, you can. I'm going to close this F1000 just to show how it goes from the scratch. You go to uh, add-ons at the top, F1000, and then here you go to the middle option which is format citations and bibliography um, um, i will open the f1000 uh, pane on the right um, and then um, i mean you can also see it from this uh, menu with the three little bars with the middle one for my citations 
So here at this point, it depends what journal you want to, you know, send uh, your paper to. It has a lot of um, journal formats already. So you can do like the nature, nature style. And it gives you a preview of how it will look in the inline and the bibliography. It's hard to see here because it's, um, uh, it's not surrounded by other texts, but this is a subscript. No, what's it called? Subscript, the one that goes up. Super. Super. Um, uh, let's say we could do the neuron format, which includes like the first author and all the date. Um, and so sometimes what I've done here is like, I'll look at many formats before finding the one I particularly want. Because um, you can also see on the bibliography, some of them include the full list of authors, right? Like this FEBS journal, and it has a uh, number in, bra in square brackets. And so it depends um, what you want to do. For a, a letter that I made recently, um, I needed to have, it was kind of like a, a letter uh, with um, uh, all the papers I've done. So I needed to highlight my name in bold. So I needed a full list of all the authors. So I think I actually use this FEBS -F -E uh, journal format, uh, but um, it depends what you know the journal wants. So let's use, for example, the science one. Um, you can insert the bibliography at the end of the document or wherever you have it. I prefer to insert it at the end. Um, you could also uh, on Google Docs go and say insert um, a break, a page break, which is um, in Mac is uh, command plus enter. Uh, because if you have the bibliography and it starts at the top of a page uh, on Google Doc, once you save the PDF, you can always cut and move it around to where you want it to go. So let's do that here. Update citations and bibliography. This one I would absolutely never do on suggested mode. Uh, I would only ever do it on editing mode. And so, you know, in search of citations, uh, uh, the only thing I do after that is I'll select the word bibliography um, and put it in bold myself manually. Uh, but this is something that, like, if I click again, update citations and bibliography, it goes away. Uh, Um, I don't know why it said I couldn't. Sir, yeah, okay. So it goes away. Any formatting. Uh, some uh, journal formats require that instead of calling it bibliography, you call it references. So this is something you have to do at the very end. Um, now, once this is done, you'll see you, we no longer see the blue um, sections of text, right? We only see the numbers. And so a common mistake is that. Uh, People will be like, oh, and citation, you know, recount to citation one, right? Uh, uh, now, uh, even if we format it with like the italics, and then it has. Uh, this first one is different from the second one. The second one is just text, it has no links, it won't be updated. Um, this one over here does have. Um, uh, the F1000 link. So for example, if I select my mouse here on the first one, go to insert citations. Um, and then let's see, I search another paper that I wanna cite along that. Um, you'll notice that it goes back to the blue syntax, right? The text with blue links. And if I click edit link, we'll see that it's now f1000.com workspace and it has two IDs. Um, two IDs and like some other syntax also. Um, um, so we go to format citations and bibliography, click update citations and bibliography. Um, in the first case, this did get updated to one comma two it updated our, our, our two to three, right? So now we have two more citations before it, uh, but it didn't update this other one, right? Um, and uh, so this is how you, uh, when I am um, 
before I submit a paper, I'll click on every of the of the citations that we have. In this case, they're formatted in parentheses, and make sure all of them have links. If I find one that doesn't have a link, I'll be, uh-oh, uh, what's the citation that's supposed to be here, right? So this would be like, uh, you know, uh, uh, sorry, I don't want to insert a link. Also, insert a comment and be like, oops. Right. Then you need it to do, uh, to fix it. So this is how F1000 workspace um, works for the Google Docs. Um, um, and it's the main thing you, you'll be using. Uh, it's um, out of the tools that we're gonna use, this is the um, the one that has probably the, the, uh, the, the higher amount of automatic steps, right? Um, that you don't need to do. The, I have a question, Leo. Sure. Um, when, so something I've wondered, is there a benefit to creating a project within your F1000 workspace um, when doing, like when making Google Docs for collaboration or do you really not need to make a specific project in your workspace for a paper? So there is because um, on the F1000 project, anyone that you've invited can edit the citations. So um, anyone can fix them, anyone can add more. Everyone can see what all the citations from everyone are. Uh, if you just do it by using your own account, uh, you know, I might, you know, be able to go to insert citations and type recon workflow and find the paper for it, but if other people won't, right? Because they won't have it on their, um, unless they've added it themselves, right? Um, so that's why it's best to actually link to a project such that like all the citations that I use, uh, everyone else can see and everyone else can like also cite them, uh, right? Because, uh, you know, in this particular example, let's say I type the first sentence, but then someone else wants to type the second sentence of recon too. But they are, you know, they, if they are not on, if the citations are not on, on a project, Either they have to do all the work again of adding them to their own F1000 workspace, or um, uh, or they just might need to leave a blank and say like you know Leo fix this later, right? Something like that. Does it does it break the like um, bibliography of a Word doc if you have collaborators adding F1000 like citations and you are too, but you're not using the same project? Mm, I don't know the answer there, like. Um, it's one of those things I don't want to test. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I'm not sure, but I, I mean, the solution I think is just to use the same project, right? Um, um, uh, so, um, but yeah, I'm not sure there. That's a good question. Okay, that um, makes sense. When I was trying to learn F1000 and adding some of my references for the spatial paper, um, I didn't realize that like, you guys were linking to a project because I didn't realize that projects existed until Carrie pointed it out. And so I was like adding stuff and I think that's maybe where Leo did, couldn't see that I had added, um, like oh, my own personal F1000 links, but not to the shared project. And so um, thankfully Carrie fixed that. And at, as far as like, I mean, it was only a few additions, but it didn't break anything. So it was just like, yeah, it updates automatically. So oh, okay. you, you mean Kristen? Uh, no, Carrie. Oh, Carrie Martinez. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, she was helping me a little bit. Mm -hmm. So you're saying Matt it didn't break it? It just like didn't integrate the two. Yeah. Like what you added and what? Okay, I see. Yeah, I guess just like when you and what Leo showed with the project update the bibli bibliography, I probably just ignored any of my links. Yeah, I probably just treated them kind of like what Leo gave as an example. Okay, yeah. that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. Cool. So now let's say we want to add a figure, right? Um, so um, the next thing is this cross-reference um, extension. And this is the one that um, can cause quite a bit of pain, um, but uh, can also save you a ton of pain. <laughs> so <clears throat> after we debug things, <laughs> Let's do the explanation correctly. So we go to add-ons, 
cross reference configure. And so what I must, uh, uh, so the, the correct explanation, sorry, is that the, la the labels are only used a single time. Um, so let's say here in our text, we want to say, um, um, like here, fear XX, right? So we have our you know, a part, part of the text here where this will be a reference to the label. And then at the bottom, at some point, we could have our figure section of our paper. We can insert the figure, which I think I don't have one right now. Uh, and then we could have our title of the figure, uh, sorry, our um, label of the figure um, with uh, then its own title and caption. So here we have the figure label, it's unique. Uh, and appears only once. Uh, the reference uh, we can have many references to labels. Okay, so I select the text for your XX. We are going to use a code here for reference. Um, thank you, Matt, which is hashtag the three letter word. So we're not actually inserting equations, we're inserting figures. So let's find the text for that. Um, so um, right click, insert link, uh, and then the link will be FIG. It has to always start with FIG for figures. I typically add an underscore and a unique name. So let's say here, this could be um, recount brain, recount dash brain. I'm just gonna select this underscore and copy that. Um, later on for figure XX here, where I want the actual label, I'll select the text, right click, insert link, which is um, Apple K. And then here I want the code for label, which is hashtag F-I-G-U-R. And then my unique um, um, ID for this uh, combination, for this particular figure, which is underscore recon dash brain. So we do that. Um, I can now go to um, add ons, cross reference, update document. And like we just saw, it's best to do one figure at a time so you, you, can, um, <laughs> you can debug easier if you need to, right? So now let's say we've, we did figure one. Let's say we want to add another figure for this first sentence. Um, so this would be like, uh, let's call it like uh, in bold, we call it brain overview, uh, something about recon brain. Um, bold that too. Um, so let's say we want to add a figure about recount itself, right? So one way you can do it is uh, start from scratch. Another way is to copy paste. In this particular case, let's do it from scratch. So I'm gonna add parentheses, any text here. Um, and then I'll add big y y here. Any text over here too. And we'll call this uh, recount to overview. Um, so on where I have the actual um, uh, lab, uh, sorry, the reference, we'll start the link underscore FIG for figures and I'll call it recount two. And over here for the label text, I'll select the two, uh, insert the link, F-I-G-U-R underscore recount two, apply. Now I can do F1000 cross, rough, cross reference and then update document. And so that automatically updated the texts for both 
If you click on any of these ones, you'll see that it has a link and it has a particular code signature for it. Um, um, and so for example, if I want to again um, link to figure the recon figure, recon to figure, I can like copy paste uh, uh, the reference. Um, if you click add-ons of uh, the document, it'll run fine. If you make the mistake of copy pasting the code from the label, and then I say cross reference of the document, it'll um, um, it shouldn't have worked. It did right now. Um, but it counted it as a figure instead of a link to it. Um, so that's not what we wanted, right? We actually wanted um, the reference to uh, to the same figure. So add-ons, cross-reference, update document. Um, and um, they're just in not the right order. And they're, they're in our text, they don't appear in the right order, but that's because uh, we have our figures um, ordered that way. So if we want to fix the order, we need to change uh, how they appear, um, how the references, how the labels appear. So the, the ones with the five letter keywords. Um, once we do that, we do update document, it'll you know, fix everything here in the text for us. So figure one, figure two, and then figure one. Um, so yes, uh, do it one one at a time, um, and then if you have questions, ask Matt. <laughs> uh, <and> ask me. <laughs> yeah. um, okay, so I do all of this um, again using the same codes that I have as the uh, directory names on Dropbox, such that I remember exactly what's the you know, particular keyword for any figure or supplementary figure or table. Because the same thing applies. I mean, we saw on add-ons, cross-reference, configure how we have all of this um, for like equations. And you can add as many things as you want, right? You can hit, click plus, add anything you want. You can change the formatting so on their figure. We maybe, you know, maybe the journal says like, um, instead of the main, sec main text, the figure, it could be FIG. Um, sorry. Uh, we want the reference to be FIG. So I can do that. Um, save and apply. And then we can see here on the top, we did the FIG. Uh, but I deleted the space before the number. If I want the uh, um, you will want a space, you have to add it here on the on the text side. Um, you might be like, oh, I want an italic um, uh, or things like that. Um, so this always depends on what journal you're using um, and what the formatting requirements are. I'll reset it to what I had before, which is for your space. Uh, um, and this is where you know the the label and the reference can have different formats, and that might make it easier for you to um, to debug. Uh, you could always use this trick to debug and see where you have a mistake. Uh, but again, if you're working with other people and they don't know these things, they might just um, you know either type it themselves and uh, um, and like format it the same way, and you might not even notice unless you click on the things and you see whether they have links or not. So this one over here doesn't have a link. And so I did this recently for the spatial transcripts on the paper where um, that's how I found like figures that were you know, not correctly ordered, not correctly named and things like that. Um, uh, actually deleted a space. Um, um, I did a little bit of space over there for the labels. Let me add it again. The mode is over here. Yeah. 
Um, so again, all of this, I only do it on editing mode. I don't do it on suggesting mode. Um, because it might, it might mess up some of the formatting. Um, um, you're basically, if you're using editing mode, you're basically giving this add-on like full editing power over your Google Doc when you do this. Um, cool, so that's the cross-reference. The LaTeX equation one, I have some screenshots on my, um, on, my, um, uh, on my blog post about it. This is basically if you actually want to use LaTeX uh, formatting for equations. Um, uh, but um, in the particular paper that I use this, which was the BrainSeq phase two paper, um, eventually the journal asked us to use um, uh, proprietary software for the equations. So I had to remake them anyway. Um, uh, but this is if you want to have more complicated equations than the ones that Google Doc uh, supports. And if you, but at this point, then you're uh, you're basically using LaTeX. You're not working on that. So you need to learn some of that for the math um, side. And then Amanda Price, who is a, a student and then a postdoc with us, she found this other add-on called Line Numbers, which. Um, mm, which I'm not seeing right now. Oh. Show line numbering. So you could be like, um, you could use this if you wanted to uh, to have like line numbers uh, in your Google Doc, which might be useful, uh, particularly in a revision stage, or you're talking to people that don't have um, access to the Google Doc version. Um, because otherwise you can just make comments, right? Um, and they, they can see them. But um, but if you're you know interacting with other people, maybe you can't do that. Right? Um, um, this is more like if you're going towards a print version of or like a PDF, right? If you're like just doing things that. Way. Yeah. So sorry, you said other people can't see if you add the line numbers. So um, what I was saying is like, I mean, if people have access to your Google Doc, you can always like select the line and comment, right? Mm -hmm. uh, right. Um, but maybe you know, let's say, let's say you're writing a letter to someone else, right? Um, based on that one of your documents, right? Um, and so you can be like, oh, a line, you know, the line that starts with recount two has 70,000 samples. In that line, we, you know, we added it a reference, right? And we added the second reference, right? And that, you know, it's hard and confusing to find. So you can, you know, add the line numbers um, and then print it with the line numbers, right? Save the PDF with the line numbers. And then be to your, you can you know mention to your reviewer like, oh, in line twenty six, we added a second reference. But if you add line numbers, let's say you have multiple people collabing on the Google Doc, and you add line numbers, will they, the other collaborators, see it on the Google Doc or not? Not unless they have this uh, add-on installed. I think. Okay. If yeah, they do I have think it, so. I can okay. see it. Let me see if I can see it. Yeah, I can't see it either, and I do have it installed. So it looks like each person has to add it for themselves. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, and that, yeah. So it could be useful. Um, um, but that's that's the whole story. I'm on the blank page here. Um, Um, so yeah, fun times. Um, you got the full debugging uh, trip. <laughs> um, cool. I don't even have any questions. Uh, uh, not so far. I really appreciate it though. Yeah. My main recommendation is just do it slowly, one at a time. Because uh, you might have to debug like I did. Um, um, uh, in another paper, someone else, um, they like tw 10 figures once and then there was a mistake and it was really hard to, to try to debug. 
but it had like 10 sets of new links and all of that. Because it, it can just be a single letter, right? It can be a space, it can be, um, it's not uppercase or stuff. Um, so maybe if one day the cross reference will have a nicer interface. So it can be like insert link, insert reference type of thing, uh, like a menu instead of, um, instead of having to do it manually. But um, it works. In F1000, I've wanted this, but it doesn't seem to actually, <coughs> excuse me, work. Um, so let's say you have like your references of interest inserted, and then you know the reference you care about and you want to insert again is like number 23. Is there any way to just insert like the number 23 and then have it update to the correct one? Or can you not link it that way? Do you have to do it through the like the add-on? So let's say I wanted to cite over here in this sentence all the recount to citations again. At this point, you can simply copy paste. You can simply copy paste because you're copying and pasting all the full like F1000 syntax, right? It's like text that says parentheses one comma two parentheses, but it's actually a link. And the link is linking to the particular um, um, elements of your citation that, that represent those two papers. Okay, but if you just type like, this is kind of like your example before. So let's say reference one and two already exist. And then later, if you just type like one and two in parentheses and then say update F1000, it won't like insert the link there. No, it won't. Okay. So like here we can have comma one and two that I just type manually as the links. But let's say I'm gonna add, um, if I add another citation before, um, Have to be a good citation. Uh, and let's say here I say like process with real RNA which was the aligner. Um, I you know, insert the citation. Um, so it's before one comma two. Then I go to format citations and bibliography, click update citations. Um, so the first one and two over here, did get updated to two comma three. But the one that we type manually didn't. So, uh, all of them have to have like the link to whatever um, element it is. Okay, that makes sense. Thank you. Cool. So, you know, good luck with the papers and stuff. Um, but yes, um, try to do it one at a time. Um, and if you need to, you could always, you know, simplify and like, um, like I did, which was like, I deleted a bunch of text uh, temporarily from my Google Doc just to see if any of that was messing up my problem or not. Right? Even what the cause of the problem or not. 